This video will be going over section 2.1, the first section in unit 2. Uh, it is on the graphs of sine and cosine. Uh, the main topics in here, we'll start by the basic graphs of sine of y equals sine of x and y equals cosine of x. We'll kind of talk about you know, the general approach to graphing one. Uh, really with technology though, um, you know, the main topic really of this section is just seeing the shapes of sine and cosine and what changes them, what's important about them. So the first section will just see the shape of sine and cosine graphs. Then we'll look at the formulas of what can affect the graph itself, something called amplitude, midline, period, and horizontal or phase shift. And then that we'll just be looking at the equations and getting the information from the equations. Then we'll look at it with graphs. This is really the main topic of this section here. If you're given a graph that looks like a sine or a cosine graph, can you figure out the formula which amounts to figuring out these four things? And then the last section, we'll just see a couple word problems introducing you know, really what sine and cosine graphs are used for. Their shape is very, very important, um, and which we'll see. Uh, so the basic graphs of y equals sine of x and y equals cosine of x. H here what I'm going to do is kind of talk about how you would go about doing it uh, yourself in general. Uh, but I'll show you how the graph really looks on the calculator as well because you know, I can't draw, I, I won't be able to plot so many points that we can see the shape come up. It's just the general look of it. Uh, but whenever you graph a sine or a cosine function, uh, you first want to point out the period. So the period of a sine and cosine graph normally is 2 pi. Now, I have it described in here, but the basic reason the period is 2 pi is because when you go around the circle, that's 2 pi radians. And what we mean by period is basically the question, how long does it take to repeat the graph? Right, so how long does it take to go around that circle and do the same thing over again is 2 pi. So, yeah. Just to put in words kind of what the period is, let's go ahead and do that. Um, and I like to use the terminology how long because often our period will be time in our word problems. I like to say to get back to where we started or re start begin repeating again. I guess not again, that's redundant, but begin repeating. So once again on the unit circle you start at zero start at zero over here, we go all the way around, that's two pi, we start doing the same thing again. Every two pi we start the same process over, so that's the period. Okay. So the period is two pi for either sine of x or cosine of x because the x and y values are the same on the unit circle, meaning x, as we go around, it's repeating the same thing, y, same idea. So the way you form these sine and cosine graphs are by these four steps. I guess I have three steps here, but then the actual graphing part. So the first step would be to divide the period by four. Since the period is two pi, when we divide it by four, we get pi over two. Then starting at x equals zero, I'll explain how this is going to get changed. But the uh, reason we start at x equals zero is because we start at the angle zero here. Starting at x equals zero, we add pi over two, the period divided by four, over and over again until you get to two pi. So what we're gonna do is have zero, then pi over two, then pi, then three pi over two, then two pi. Basically, we're hitting, hitting all of the axes on here. And then we get these x values. Right. So what you do is you gather the x values like that and you make an x, y, or a t chart, depending on whatever you called it um, growing up. 
that sounded kind of weird growing up but uh, whenever you learn to graph stuff very basic like a line you plot a whole bunch of x values you have a whole bunch of y values so we take these x values 0 pi over 2 pi 3 pi over 2 and 2 pi And we plug them into. I'll do. I'll do cosine uh, first, and I'll. We'll just um, see how on the calculator sine is very similar. Similarly done. But I want to plug in x dx values to y equals cosine of x. Right. So co first we plug in zero to x. We got cosine of zero. Cosine at the angle zero is one, right? So the x value, you know, it gets kind of confusing when you're talking about x and y with cosine and sine, but these are just the letters we use to graph. You want to think back to the unit circle. What is the cosine value when the angle is zero? Then cosine of pi over two, the x value at the angle pi over two is zero. Then cosine of pi, the x value at the negative x axis at the angle of pi is negative one. And then cosine of three pi over two, the negative y axis, the x value is zero. And when we get back to two pi, cosine of two pi, since two pi is coterminal with the angle zero, it's one. And if we kept going, we would repeat this pattern. So the next one would be zero, the next one would be negative one, next one would be zero, next one would be one, so on. But we only want to graph one period and get the five points like this. But we want to pick these numbers specifically. All right, so what I'm going to do now is really form the graph by starting to just plot these points. And once again, I am going to do cosine because that's what I plugged into. Uh, but I'll show you the graphs on the calculator for sine and cosine. I should probably try to make this a little straighter. Can't do it very well, but. So we got X. It's about the right to y axis for the x on the x axis. We got the x axis and our y axis. Um, so I'm going to start by just plotting these x values on the x axis pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. I'm going to stop there even though we'll see this can continue because we would just be going around the unit circles some more. And I'll do cosine in red because we're going to end up putting sine on the same graph. Uh, but what you want to know, notice about the y values is they're just alternating between 1, 0, and negative 1. So I'm going to plot those. And when x equals 0, y is 1. When x equals pi over 2, y is 0. When x equals pi, y is negative 1. When x equals 3 pi over 2, y is 0. And when x equals 2 pi, y is 1. All right, what's going to happen with all these? The reason you choose these five numbers is up here, this is actually going to be the top of the graph. Remember that cosine spits out numbers between negative 1 and 1. So 1 is the top of the graph, negative 1 is the bottom. We're going to get the tops and bottoms, and in between them, we get the middle. So when you graph these five points like this, you're, and when you plot them, you'll be going between top, middle, bottom, middle, top. And with sine, you'll start, we'll see that we'll end up starting with the middle, but same idea. All right, so the way we connect the graph, it's not a straight line, it's a curved line. It's going to look like a wave. And the main thing I want you to realize here is when we graph sine and cosine you know i'm not asking for art skills but i don't want to see just straight lines connecting these it's got to be curved that's very very important all right 
right? So you, you should know what the absolute value graph looks like. It looks like a V-shape. This is not making a V-shape. This is a curved shape. Right. But this is the graph of cosine of x over our one period from 0 to 2 pi. The idea with periodic functions, since they repeat, you know, like I said, if we kept going, we would just go around the unit circle again. So we would actually make this exact shape over and over again. So from, let's say, 2 pi to 4 pi, if I plotted everything and did all the x and y values, I would get the same exact shape from top to middle to bottom to middle back to top. But it goes over and over and over again. It never stops. So it's like riding a wave here. And of course, we can go backwards because we talked about negative angles. So this, even though I've kind of dash these in and um, this is pretty hard to draw <laughs> with all the dashed lines but you know these it repeats over and over again all the way from from negative infinity all the way to the left over to the right so it's just going to keep repeating that shape i will show you now on the calculator how you can graph it uh, one thing if you do want to graph things on your calculator, you have to be in radian mode. I mentioned this before, really why we use radians instead of degrees. It's because anytime you use a formula, the thing inside, which is we think about as an angle of sine and cosine, has to be what we call unitless. It cannot have units to it. And the degree symbol is actually a unit. It's not giving us a realistic thing. So if we go ahead and go to our calculator to graph, or make sure you're in, oops, that's not the right one, mode, and make sure you're in radian mode. If you're in degree mode, you're gonna get the wrong looking picture. And I wanna graph cosine, y equals cosine of x, because that's what we did first. One thing I'll say, if you just hit graph and you don't adjust, it looks, you're gonna see the shape, but maybe it's not very precise. The reason you might not be able to see where it's at the bottom or the top is because it's happening at these increments of pi. So what you want to do when you, you go to your window to make it look pretty, but let's say we go from negative to pi. It's going to insert the decimal, but that's okay, to 4 pi. Right now the reason I'm picking those values is because negative 2 pi would show one period over here. From negative 2 pi to 0, then 0 to 2 pi would be the one we graphed, and 2 pi to 4 pi would be the next one. So you can see three periods. The x scale, I'm going to use the scale I have down here. I'm going in increments of pi over 2. Yeah, pi divided by 2. Once again, it's going to round it, but that's okay. It's going to look fine when you graph it because it's rounded close enough. The y values. Since y goes between negative 1 and 1, yeah, I would make these a lot smaller. Maybe not negative 1 to 1, but negative 2 to 2 would be a good idea. So you can see everything, but there's some space. Uh, the y scale is fine. I don't know. I don't really remember what these are for. I've never adjusted them in my life, so I wouldn't go below the x and y scale stuff. But now that we messed with all that, if you hit graph, you'll see a better picture. Each one of these hash marks is a pi over 2. So we start at 0, then at pi over 2, we're at in the middle. Then at pi, we're at the bottom. 3 pi over 2 are in the middle. Pi, 2 pi, we're at the top. And it just repeats its shape. All right. Now the only way sine and cosine differ is not even with their shape. So the sine and cosine graphs just look different by a horizontal shift. So, so what I'll do real quickly just to show you is plug in the same exact numbers to sine and get the y values and plot them. But the idea of what the shape looks like is going to be exactly the same. Right. 
right? So if we plug in x equals zero to sine y equals sine of x, we get sine of zero, which is zero. Y equals sine of pi over two, which is one. Sine of pi is zero. Sine of three pi over two is negative one. And then sine of two pi, since that's where zero is as well, the same coterminal angle, it's gonna also be zero. All right, but if we plot these, so at x equals zero, we get y equals zero. At x equals pi over two, we get y equals one. At x equals pi, we get y equals zero. At x equals three pi over two, we get y equals negative one. And at x equals two pi, y equals zero. You see the pattern forming here. We, but we start in the middle, top, middle, bottom, middle. So it's going to have the same curvy type of shape. It's not going to be a straight line. Just do your best if you have to graph these. Make it curvy. And it's just going to repeat exactly like cosine of x does, meaning we're going to have this shape exactly over here. We're going to have this shape exactly over here. So I'm going to just you know, very roughly sketch because I can't do it too precisely over here. All right, so that's back at negative two pi to zero. We see one of them, zero to two pi. We got our one that we had already. And then all the way over to four pi, we've got, it's gonna go up. Gonna turn back and go down. Then it's gonna keep going down until we're at the bottom, and then it's gonna go back up to the middle at four pi. Right. But the you know the big takeaway I think from looking at these graphs, I'll graph the sine graph on the cosine graph as well for the uh, in the graphing calculator. They have the same exact shape, but the sine graph it looks like it's it and it is just shifted pi over two to the right. right. But the really big takeaway is these have the same shape, which means most of the time when you're doing word problems, when you're trying to look at a graph and figure out an equation, you're going to be able to use either sine or cosine. Certain things will change inside your formula. But right. that is a very important takeaway. But let's go ahead and I'll go to my y equals and I'm just my windows already set up from the doing cosine of x so I don't have to mess with that all the x and y stuff's going to be good so I do sine of x and graph that then sine of x you can see exactly shift it over we start in the middle go to the top back to the middle back to the bottom back to the middle and repeat all right but once again, the important thing is the shape. It's very wavy and it's not a jagged straight line, straight line, straight line. It's curvy. But anything that repeats, which we'll see examples of at the end, like um, temperature throughout the day in theory would look like this. It starts at the bottom in the morning, goes up in the afternoon, and then back to the bottom in the morning again. Just one of the examples we'll see later. All right, but that's exactly what I have really written here, the important point. All sine and cosine graphs have the same shape. The difference in the two is that y equals sine of x is shifted pi over two units to the right of y equals cosine of x. All right, but now I want to talk about a couple of the things that can affect your sine and cosine graphs. So what we're going to do here there are four things. It seems like a lot at once, but it's really not too terrible. There's not an overwhelming amount of information here because the sine and cosine graphs have the same shape. <clears throat> but one of them is called the amplitude. And then we have the midline, the period, and the horizontal, sometimes called the phase shift. 
Uh, but these are things that you should have seen in college algebra. You just didn't see them in this context because we weren't studying trig graphs. But um, what I'm going to do is go through what each letter means. Then we'll talk about it with the equations and I'll graph the equations so you can actually see what's going on with this stuff. All right, so the if the amplitude is given by the absolute value of A, one thing I'm going to point out here, the amplitude is always positive because it's the absolute value. All right, what the amplitude is going to measure is basically the height of the wave. For this, for the sine and cosine graphs, the height of the wave is 1 because it's how far we go from the middle to either the top or the bottom y value. It's not the entire top to the bottom, which we'll see. These graphs have an amplitude of 1 because the number multiplying the front here, our amplitude A is 1. So the amplitude is just half half of from the top to the bottom. Uh, the midline, the midline is a an invisible line where the middle of the graph is, it's a horizontal line. So one, the way we characterize the midline is really it's a horizontal vertical shift, a horizontal line, it's vertical shift. It moves up or down, and the way we represent that in an equation is by adding it to the end. So if you add a, have a number added to the very end, that is what your midline is. Once again, I'll relate it to these. These have a midline of 0 because there's not anything added. So y equals sine of x and cosine of x. And the middle of the graph is y equals 0 or the x-axis. So when we have a number there, it's going to move it up or down. Uh, the phase shift is the same as the horizontal shift. That's how much you move left or right. And this is really important when we get to the word problems <clears throat> because a horizontal shift is based on, you know, whether you're using sine or cosine. Right. Now, once again, we'll see how it works more so with um, an example here where we actually have one. But the horizontal shift of these is zero because it's the C is the value inside here we're not subtracting anything off of x or adding anything it's just x but the important thing that's going to happen is we have to notice that the uh, cosine graph has a y-intercept at the top so that if we're doing a cosine graph we have to know where the top is and similarly for the sine graph we have to know where the middle is because that's where the y-intercept is Right, but this one we can't say much about without actually seeing an example. So I'm going to stop there. The last thing that tends to give the most trouble is what the period is. Because the period is not in the equation. The period is 2 pi over the number multiplying x. So the number that we represent that is with b. But the big thing you want to take about, think about here, the reason why it's 2 pi over something is because the basic period is 2 pi. These have period of 2 pi. And here the b is 1 because we're multiplying x by 1. So the period is 2 pi over 1, which is 2. Right. But the main problem always with these things is mixing up period and the letter b. Now you can see the period in the graph, how long it takes to repeat itself. You can see B in the equation. 
So if you're give asked the period in the equation, you got to do some work, which we'll see. And that's exactly what I have written here. You, know, you just got to be careful when you're doing the period. All right, but that's what the letters A, B, and C, and D represent and kind of what they look like visually. Once again, we'll see, see how, how C works with the actual examples here. Um, so I'll, I'll keep this in view while we work the first one. It says, for the following equations, determine the amplitude, period, horizontal shift, and equation of the midline for each. All right, so the amplitude is given by the absolute value of A, and this is A up here, the number in front. So the amplitude is the absolute value of negative 3, which is 3. Right. But it is not right at all if you say negative 3. It has to be a positive number. So, right, you got to put 3. If you put negative 3, that means you're not doing the whole thing. All right. So the midline, I talk about this one next because you really do these two together when you look at graphs, is the thing at the end. It's the number we're adding to the end. But we have to make sure we give it as an equation. So here we've got D. Because the equation is plus D, you got to take the sign with it. D is negative 2. We're shifting down 2. The midline is Y equals that number. Y equals negative 2. But you must give the equation. You can't just write negative 2. That is not correct. Now the period and the phase shift, you kind of you really work together as well because they are B and C and they are involved with each other. I'm going to do the period first because we want to be careful about the phase shift, how we do it. Um, so the period, the formula for that is 2 pi over B. And once again, B is the number multiplying the x, which is 4. Okay. Now, the way the equation is written, we have a b with parentheses around it. The reason why it, we have our standard equation, what you might call it, is written like this, is it makes it easier to see the c, which is the horizontal shift, or the phase shift, but your equation doesn't have to be given to you like that. All right, but b is 4, our period is 2 pi over 4, which equals pi over 2. Oops, I didn't actually want to scroll down. And then the last thing, the horizontal or the phase shift. Whichever one you want to call it by name, that's fine. Just know that they're the same. Now, the way you get this, this is the foolproof way. There's a lot of ways you can figure out C from here. You can factor the 4 out and see what is left inside and then go from there. What I like to do is set the inside equal to zero and solve. When you solve and get a number, that number is C. And that'll tell you how far you are shifting and whether you're doing it left or right. So let's go ahead and look at that. Our inside here is 4x plus 8 equals 0, or we're going to set it equal to 0, rather. Solve this for x. So we got to subtract 8 from each side, and we got 4x equals negative 8, and then divide by 4, and we get x equals negative 2. All right, so when you're looking at the phase shift, there's two things to look at. There's the number you get with it, and then there's the sign, whether it is positive or negative. All right, the way I think about this number is where we start graphing. If I was to make this graph, this would be the number where we begin graphing. And when it's negative, that means we're going to move to the left because we're going to 
be graphing to the left of zero. And then if it's positive, we move right. Now, once again, this is the way I like to think about it because no matter what the inside looks like, this always works. You don't have to worry about missing a negative sign or whether, you know, you, can you really factor it uh, well or is it going to be messy? It always works. So negative 2 means we're going to move 2 to the left. And you'll see with the homework questions, what it's going to ask you for the horizontal shift is it's going to ask you to type in a number and whether it's left or right. The really big warning I'm going to mention here is that when people get negative numbers here, they write to the left, which is fine, but they still include the negative sign here. You would not say moves negative 2 to the left. Now you only want to use the positive. So just keep that in mind when you are, <clears throat> excuse me, when you are going forward and doing these problems. If you get a negative number, that means it's to the left, but you're moving two units to the left. You wouldn't say I'm moving negative two units to the left. Right, but what I want to go ahead and do is graph this one so you can see what's moving on, what's going on here. Now, because there's a lot going on, there's a change in amplitude, midline period, and phase shift, it is going to be a lot. I'm just trying to get you to overview how it works. Let's go ahead and get rid of these. We got negative 3 cosine of 4x plus 8, I believe, I don't remember what the number was, negative 3 cosine of 4x plus 8 minus 2. Right. Now one thing is if you don't adjust your graph because of all the changes here, I'm just going to show you, you're not going to see much. The period being a lot different means it's going to move quicker. It's going to go through its process quicker, that's why you see a whole bunch of more humps here, but also the shift the horizontal shift, the phase shift, and the um, amplitude are going to change it quite a bit. All right, so what you want to do is go to your window. Now think about the midline. This is where the middle is going to be. And the amplitude is telling you how much it's going to go up and down. All right, so, you know, kind of think about how to graph these if you want a nice picture is with the y values. Go three above and below negative two because the amplitude is telling you how much it moves above and below the midline. Okay, so if I just kind of think about that, three above negative two is one, three below is negative five. You know, give yourself some wiggle room there for the y values. If it's going to go down to negative five, maybe make it negative six. If it's going to go up to one, make it two. The scale doesn't matter here, just leave it a hold one, that's fine. Now for the x values, the phase shift, you don't have to worry too much about involving this, involving the phase shift. Uh, what you probably want to more so do is adjust the um, x scale because of the period. Since, you know, the way we made these graphs before was dividing the period divided by 4. If we divide our period by 4, we get pi over 8. This is going to be my x scale. And once again, I just want you to be able to, if you're given the equation, graph it and graph it in a way that you can read what's going on. So that is our x scale if we are graphing. We're going to adjust that. We got pi divided by 8, which is right there. And then the one thing I'm going to do, once again, I'm not really too concerned with the phase shift. I will show you how that works when we graph it. Um, but I don't want to see uh, all those humps moving on. You know, it, it makes it look really messy. 
So since the period's pi over two, if I can graph maybe six periods of it, that'll be three pi. So I'm gonna do negative pi to two pi. You know, so you know, just something where it's there's not gonna be too many. So I, I should see six periods. So I did three pi of a range. But that should give you a nice picture, and once again, I one, just want to be able to explain what's going on here. So you can see one, two, three, four, five, six. We have six periods going on. I'm just looking at the number of peaks, but you can look at the number of valleys, the number of bottoms that occur. And, you know, seeing the period if you don't adjust scales kind of hard the period is remember each of these hash marks is pi over eight but what we talked about before it, we should repeat every four hash marks which we do one two three four we get back to the top so our period is good our midline if we kind of see what's halfway in between it is negative two uh, the problems in the homework are gridded, so you will have like a checkered pattern to be able to see this. But we can see that's going on. And then also the amplitude, like I mentioned. If you check how high are you going up from the middle. And from here up to the top, that is three. One, two, three. All right now the phase shift is negative two or two to the left. All right. Since these are kind of weird intervals, what I want to do is just if I go to the calc menu and go to the value, if I type in x equals negative two, it'll tell me it'll show me exactly where it is. All right. Now this is kind of where the start of our graph is. All right, we shifted left two. Now I, you might be thinking right now, well, the, gra the graph is supposed to be at the top and we see it at the bottom because the cosine graph, regular cosine graph starts at the top. Uh, but what happens here is this negative sign f is flipping the graph. All right, so once again, I'm just pointing out some things that are going to be useful when we do this more specific problem. The negative sign flips our graph over the x-axis. So it takes the top to the bottom. Okay. But this is exactly what we see. We would be up here, but we shifted left to, and then it flips the top with the bottom, so we go down to the bottom. Okay, that's what the phase shift does. Uh, you're probably not going to be able to figure out the specific number here. It's not going to be nice because it's pi over 2 over. Um, but ultimately, that's what our amplitude, our midline, our period are, and our horizontal and phase shift and how we find it. Now, for the, this next one, I just want to go through and do one more um, just make sure the pi doesn't bother you. Everything is exactly the same. All right, so we've got to figure out the amplitude. We got to figure out the equation of the midline. We've got to figure out the phase shift or horizontal shift, and we've got to figure out the period. All right, so the amplitude is the absolute value of five, which is five. The vertical shift or midline is y equals that number. Now, I forgot, I just wanna color code this, period is in purple. Period is two pi over b, and b this time is pi over three. b is the number multiplying x. All right, remember the period you have to figure out from the equation because you cannot see it. 
it's 2 pi over b. And we got b is pi over 3. So we got 2 pi divided by pi over 3. All right, this is something we're dividing by a fraction, so we keep change flip. We multiply by its reciprocal. We get 2 pi times 3 over pi. And then the pi's cancel, and it gives us 2 times 3, which is 6. So our period is 6. And then lastly, the midline. Midline, do the same thing as last time. You might like to just factor and figure it out from there. I'm reading the midline, sorry. The phase shift, or the horizontal shift, we set the inside equal to zero, pi over three x plus four pi over three, and solve that. Okay, so we subtract the four pi over three, we get pi over three times x equals negative four pi over three. And then we multiply, if you want to get x by itself, the easiest thing to do is multiply by the reciprocal. Multiply by 3 over pi. Right, so everything cancels out over here. And we get a lot of canceling out on the other side. The 3s and the pi still go away. And we got x equals negative 4. All right, since this one is negative, once again we're moving, we're shifting to the left and it is 4. And if you wanted to go through and get a nice picture yourself with the graph, you can do that. You would divide the period by four, figure out your X scale, your amplitude and midline would tell you how to figure out your Y range. And then also use your period. You can graph three periods if you made the range, you know, 18 for X, like negative six to 12 or something. But that is, how we do or deal with the um, equations. The, one, the two things here, one more important because it is going to be something that is the main struggle with these is the period, it's two pi over b, but also the phase shift. There's a lot of ways to figure it out. This is the way I like doing it because no matter how the inside looks, it always works. All right, so the next thing, we kind of talked about this. I'm not going to go in detail. I just had pictures in here to show you. Um, but one at a time, I'm, I wanted to kind of display what the midline, the amplitude, the period, the horizontal and phase shift do. You know, we really looked at it all at once in the last picture, and I can definitely understand that never having seen this before, it could be overwhelming. But... If we just do one at a time now, it, hopefully it makes more sense. All right, so each of the graphs below contain the parent function, which is just going to be y equals sine of x or cosine of x, and then the graph that I have listed here. And one thing I'll mention, the last two examples that I have at the bottom are very important. All right, so the graph of y equals cosine of x minus 1 you know, we take the graph of y equals cosine of x and the minus 1 just tells us to shift down 1. It moves the midline. So it moves the midline down. And you can see that the blue graph is the y equals cosine of x minus 1. It's midline halfway between 0 and negative 2 is negative one. Really wish there was like a line tool. For this. All right, so you can see that working one oh yeah, no, see these things working one at a time. That's the midline. Uh, if we change the amplitude, so here I'm multiplying y equals sine of x by two, it's you know, really makes it twice as steep. It goes up to 2 and down to negative 2. 
and you can see that you know combination of the midline and going up to the top here our amplitude is 2 You know, one way to think about amplitude is it's twice as tall because we're multiplying it by 2. All right, the third one I've got here, I know you can see the bottom one. Don't worry about that one yet. The third one we've got here, y equals sine of x minus 2. This, effect, this changes the phase shift or affects the phase shift, the horizontal shift. If you set the inside equal to 0 because we are subtracting here, we get x equals pi over 2. And that shifts pi over 2 units to the right since it's positive. And you can see that with our graph here. The red one is y equals sine of x, our normal one. And the blue one is the graph shifted pi over 2 to the right. Each one of these hash marks is pi over 2 and we're shifting pi over 2 to the right but nothing else changes all right the last one it looks kind of weird because anytime you change the period it's it gets more jagged um, it gets much steeper or much flatter depending on what you're doing and this one we are multiplying x by pi so b equals pi changes the period to 2 pi over b, which is 2 pi over 2. Sorry, 2 pi over pi, because b is pi, and that becomes 2. And this is a much, probably a much better example than the other one for looking at the period, because the hash marks here, you can see I made them whole numbers. And how long it takes to repeat, go through its cycle for this cosine graph, the one in blue is the one with period of two, zero, and then two, you can see we've gone through our cycle. And then it's gonna repeat that. So it's affecting the period, you know, makes the waves come more or less frequently depending on what your number is, you're changing it by. All right, the last two I've got here are when you reflect the sine and cosine graphs over the x-axis because they are so important when we get to word problems. One thing I want to point out here for y equals negative cosine of x, that flips these negative flips it over the x-axis. It makes our y-intercept go from the top to the bottom. So what one thing I'm just going to mention here was we're going to use y equals negative cosine of x if we know about the bottom of the graph. All right, so for cosine of x, the y-intercept's at the top. We use cosine of x if we know the top. And once again, this will make more sense when we get there. What if I relate it back to the temperature stuff? If you know the high temperature when that occurs, you're going to use cosine of x. If you know when the low temperature occurs in these word problems, you're going to use negative cosine of x. Now, when you know the average or middle temperature, that's when you use sine. Uh, the important thing with sine here is when you look at the y-intercept and you flip it over the x-axis, they're still in the middle on both, the y-intercepts in the middle. But for y equals sine of x, it's going up, and y equals nine of negative sine of x is going down. Okay, so what this is telling us is we're going to use y equals sine of x if you know average or the middle, and it's increasing. And we're going to use y equals negative sine of x if we know the average and it's decreasing. Okay. 
Okay. So that's one thing you're going to want to keep in mind <clears throat> uh, how we're going to coordinate all this. All right. But I'm just writing this in the notes now because that's it's so important to the word problems. And if I say it a few times, hopefully it helps by the time you get there. All right, so what we're going to do, the last two things in this section, we want to look at problems like if we're given a graph, can we figure out the equation? And then take those ideas and actually set up some word problems with this stuff. Right, this is a definitely the longest section in Unit 2. It sets the foundation for everything else. All right, so I have the general strategies here for figuring out the equation of a graph. Uh, the things I do first is figure out the amplitude and the midline. They really go together, as you saw. You figure out the where the middle is, and then you can get the amplitude by seeing how far up or down you go. Then you can figure out the period by looking at the graph, and then use what the formula for B is. Because right, when we make our equation, we're putting in b. We're not putting in the period. b is 2 pi over the period. And then the last thing is determining the phase shift. And I really just have exactly what I wrote down outlined. Um, your phase shift is going to differ from person to person depending on whether you use cosine or negative cosine or sine or negative sine. And we'll see with our examples. All this stuff never changes, though. All right, so everyone's going to have the same A, B, and D. Depending on which one of these you pick, you will have a different C. All right, but we got two examples here. The first one right here, it's giving us the graph, and we want to figure out an equation for it. All right, so one thing I'll say, one thing you want to notice here, even though we're in this section very specifically, is it has the shape of sine and cosine. So it's going to be one of those. And I'll remind you of the formulas. We got y equals a cosine of b times x minus c plus d. And same thing for sine. Right? The formulas, what you really want to remember, they're exactly the same. All the letters mean the same thing. What your goal is to start is to tell me what is A, D, and B, right? All these are the same no matter what. These are going to be the same for everyone. All right, so you look here, you look at the middle. The middle is definitely at zero because it's between negative one and one. And that's what we represent D by. So D equals zero. Our amplitude is how far up we go from the middle. From zero up to the top here, which is one, we get A equals one. And B is two pi over the period. Okay, so I will write that right away before I even look at anything else because you can see the period from the graph. You cannot see B from the graph. But the period is how long it takes to repeat. And the way I like to think about it is how long does it take to go from peak to peak? Because that's the easiest for my eyes to see. All right, so what I'm thinking about here, how far away are these two? And they are from x equals 0 to x equals 4. The period is 4. All right, so that means b is 2 pi over 4, which simplifies to pi over 2. And you want to keep pi in there. Do not type that in your calculator. Okay, So that is a, b, and d. And everyone will have the same a, b, and d. Your c can differ depending on which of these you use. All right, so for me, I like to always use cosine when I have a graph if I can. The reason I like, I like to use cosine, and I'll go ahead and write a positive sign. I'm talking about using the positive cosine. 
the reason why I like to use that is it's the x it's an x value where the graph is at a peak right and this is simply because the graph of regular cosine of x the y intercepts at zero right but you can we'll graph our answer just so you can see that all these work all right, so if I wanted to use positive cosine, I look, you can see here, I can use x equals zero, so c equals zero, or I could use c equals four. It doesn't matter at all which one you pick. You just wanna pick one of them. But you can go through all the possible options. You're just gonna find one that works and then go from there. Um, yeah, for this one, I won't do everything because it'll get um, very messy. But let's, uh, for example, say I wanted to use negative cosine just to hit on both of the cosines. What I would do is pick the x value where the graph is at a valley or at the bottom and we have a bottom here at negative 2 we have a bottom here at 2 so if we use negative cosine we could have c equals 2 or c equals negative 2 once again I want to reiterate you pick one of these and you're done. If I use positive cosine and c equals zero, I plug it in. That's it. You don't have to look at anything else. I'm just showing you how this positive and negative thing works. All right. But all of these are possible answers. I'm going to write all four of them down just for completeness. But you do not have to pick more than one, like I said. So we got y equals a is 1, uh, 1 times cosine of b, which is pi over 2, times x minus c. Since I picked positive cosine, I can have 0, plus d, which is 0. Or if I pick positive cosine, but I wanted c equals 4, that's also fine. Just remember it's x minus in the formula. Right, but you want to notice everything is, else is the same here. The only thing I change is c for positive cosine. All right, so these two answers would be both fine for positive cosine. Now, if I wanted to use negative cosine, I can. And the, the way this affects my equation, let me go ahead and title that first. For negative cosine, let me write it like that. Because we're talking about negative cosine here, even though my a is one, I'm gonna include a negative. But b and a are still the same. C values, possible C values for negative cosine are 2. We got x minus 2. D is still 0. Or negative 2 is also a possibility. And when we plug in negative 2 because of the minus, we get a plus 2. All right. So literally every one of these will give you the same exact graph. They are all valid. Uh, and we didn't even go over the possibilities with sine. You could pick sine with this as well. You would find where the middle is. Positive sine, middle, and going up. Negative sine, middle, and going down. All right, so I'm just, I would use this one because this is the easiest one to write in as our answer. But 
absolutely any of these are correct answers. All right, so what I'll do now, I'm not gonna graph all four in the calculator, but I'll graph, let's just say this first one here and then this one here, you can see they're exactly the same. So we go to y equals, for the top equation I made, we have y equals one, which I wanna include, cosine of pi over two, pi divided by, oops, divided by two, times x minus zero. If the minus zero does nothing, I don't have to actually include it. I'm just writing it. Um, and then plus zero, which does nothing. And then to randomly pick this one, so you can see that they are the same and they'll give you the right picture. We got negative one, which I don't want to include the one cosine. Our b is pi over two. And then we got x plus 2. All right, but you do want to adjust your window a little bit because, you know, they kind of gave you the picture here. You can just use this. Now we should look at x from negative 3 to 5. And their scale was 1. And then we can look, look at y from negative 2 to 2, and their scale was 1 as well. And we go ahead and graph. You can see how it makes it traced over exactly the same. It's the same graph. There are a lot of answers on these kinds of questions. You just find one that works. Um, but you can see it starts at the middle, goes to the bottom, middle, top, and ours does exactly that. And we scaled it off exactly the same. But if you graph the other two, they would also work. So the next one I have here is just one that's a little more complicated. That way, you know, you see that not everything is ideal or we can have some changes in everything. But I'm gonna go ahead and write down the equations again. All right, we wanna figure out the equation for this graph. It's definitely a sine or cosine graph because it has that shape. And once again, I'm going to start by writing spots for A, D, and B because I can't stress this enough. This is the same for everyone. The confusion with these graphs is always what to do with C, which I totally understand because I feel like in math, there's not a lot of times you've probably seen a lot of different answers for a question. Uh, it's a little uncomforting, but these have to be the same. Right, so just figure out where is the middle of this graph. Well, half, halfway between 4 and negative 2 is 1. Now you definitely have to use your eyeballs on some of these, but it's, it's not going to be a fraction number or anything for the midline. It's always going to be a whole number. And we see that the midline is y equals 1, so d equals 1. Now the amplitude, how far are we going from the midline up to the top? We get going from one to three, sorry, from one to four is three. And I mixed up three and four again. Amplitude from one to four is three. So A equals three. And period, I'm gonna do the same thing as last time, peak to peak, because B is two pi over the period. And somehow we have graphs with the same exact period as last time, but that doesn't really matter. We go from negative one to three, which is four. All right, but the period is four. We plug that in, we get B is pi over two. Right. Now for this one, I if for those of you watching the video, I highly encourage you just to pause it and kind of figure out C yourself and see if your answer would work. Um, you can graph it. 
The reason why I encourage that is I'm going to intentionally do this one with sine because the other one was, was cosine. And your answer might look different than mine, but it can be the same. And I think that will help build the confidence on this stuff. All right, but let's look at C. I'm going to use sine first. So positive sine the way we would get C. With positive sine is we want to be in the middle. And if you've pointed out your midline, it makes it a lot easier. We want to be in the middle and going up. So let's look, we're at our midline here. This is at the middle, but it's going down. So that's not gonna be positive sign. Here we're at the middle and going up. So we can have C equals negative two. This is the middle and going down. So that doesn't work. And then middle and going up again, C equals two. So either one of these works. I'm going to only do one of them this time but you can use either one. So if you want to use positive sign, we got y equals a is 3, sine of b, which is pi over 2, parentheses x minus, let me use 2 for c, plus d, which is 1. All right, but remember, just pick one of the c values. If you want to use negative sign, then we want to look at the C values where the graph is at the middle but going down. All right, so we got C is negative 4. It's a possibility. We got C is zero, which is a possibility. And we got C equals four, which is a possibility. All right, once again, if you're using negative sign, if you really want to use negative sign, just pick one of them and plug it in with your A, B, and D. You know, one thing I think isn't bad practice at all is if you can see on your graph it's possible to get C equals zero, pick that one. Because that really means you understand, you know, all the possibilities. If you, it's not always possible with these problems, I'll go ahead and say that now. But a lot of them you can pick the right one and get C equals zero. So if you can, it's not a bad idea to practice. But if we want to pick negative sign, we got negative a, which is three, sine of pi over two. I'm gonna pick c as zero, because like I said, that's the best one, plus one. And just for the sake of simplifying this one, because we didn't last time with zero, you don't have to have the minus zero there. And if you don't have the minus zero there, there's no nothing to distribute to. You can just get rid of the parentheses. All right. But what I'll do again just to finish up the problem is graph our equation here. I'll do both of them. You can see they're the same. And then we'll compare it to our given graph. All right. But if you got a cosine graph, if you paused it, got a cosine graph, of course, your answer won't look exactly like this because you'll have different C value. Graph it and see if it works. All right, so for our first one, we got th y equals 3 sine of pi divided by 2. And we got x minus 2. plus one. For our second one, I had negative three sine pi divided by two. 
x plus 1. Now the reason I put the pi over 2 in parentheses here is just to make sure that there's no errors here. It's doing pi over 2 times x, not potentially putting the x in the denominator with the 2. All right, but I want to make the window the same as the graph. That way it's easy to compare. So x is going from negative 4 to 4 with a scale of 1. y was going from negative 5 to 5 with a scale of 1. And then we graph. And I think I messed up a number here. Did I mess up a number here? I, I guess I, I made a mistake uh, on putting in my y equals, I believe, and maybe a, a good lesson to be careful because we all can look past it. Um, but for this first y equals here, I forgot to put a, an extra parentheses around here to close it off. So I thought the plus one was inside. And this should fix my problem and make them look exactly the same. And it does. All right. But if you compare that to our graph, remember the one that we had here, we start at the middle, went down to the bottom, middle, top. And the way the graph was made, it happens at every hash mark on the x. So we're at the middle, bottom, middle, top, middle, and so on. You can compare all the x and y values and we're good to go. But if you had a cosine graph, I'll just say really quickly, your C could have been 1, negative 1, or 3. If you had a negative cosine graph, your C could have been negative 3 or negative 1, and you should have gotten the same graph. You would get the correct answer. All right, but once again, just pick one of these, and you're good to go. If you really like sine, you can use sine almost every time. If you really like cosine, you can use cosine almost every time. Uh, there are some problems where you can't really see where the top is at a specific number or you can't really see where the average is, so you have to use one or the other. All right. But once again, I highly encourage you when you do these problems to try to either make it as consistent as possible, meaning if you like cosine, try to do cosine of every time, or if you can try to make c equal zero, you know, it really makes, it really forces you to try to realize the difference in these graphs, you know, they're standard graphs. All right. All right, so the last, finally, the last topic in this section is the applications. This is really, this is really uh, something that I like to do, put in this section, because it fits so closely to what we're doing already. And it helps make the last section of this unit, which is 2.4, which is only word problems, a little bit easier, because you're already in the mindset of doing a lot of this stuff. All right. So lastly, we will look at some word problems involving trig graphs, many things, you know, including things that are repeated over the course of the day, Temperature, tide level of the ocean are modeled by sine graphs or cosine graphs. Uh, another thing is you could probably look at, I would say, anything that happens over a year that involves temperature, like pool sales. People tend to buy pools certain times of year and not so much others, so you'd probably see a type of sine or a cosine graph pop up there. But tons of things have applications to these. Um, populations of certain animals in certain areas because when it gets cold you know they may not reproduce as much when it's warmer they do so their population goes up and down all right but like i have here the main complication of water problems is you aren't given the whole graph but just bits of information knowing whether to pick y equals sine of x or y equals cos cosine of x matters based on the given information and 
I have here again the top and the bottom sine or using cosine or negative cosine. If you're in the middle and going up, you use sine. If you're in the middle and going down, you use negative sine. So we, we talked about that a lot. You can write that down again. But I want to start by just looking at, you know, really the problems here. Some terminology might not be super familiar in this section. We'll practice that as well. But really, this is a good preview of what kind of things trig graphs can do. All right, so the first one here, it says a population of rabbits oscillates 35 above and below an average of 52 during the year, hitting the lowest value in January, which they're saying is t equals 0. What we want to do is find an equation for the population, capital P, in terms of the months since January, t. Right, so one thing that's going to point out that this is going to be a trig graph, a sine or cosine graph, is the word oscillates. Oscillates means it just goes up and down regularly, which is exactly what sine and cosine graphs do. All right, so just this word oscillates means we're going to have a sine or a cosine graph. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just write down the two equations again, y equals a sine of b times x minus c plus d. I'm not really concerned with which one we're using right away because it's more important to remember what we're doing here. We're trying to figure out what a, b, c, and d are and which one we should use. But just like from before, I want to mention that A, B, and D are the same for everyone. You want to figure these out first. All right, and what you have to do is use the words here because everything is going to be in the way the word is set up. You're somehow going to figure out A, B, C, and D just from this sentence. It seems a little far-fetched at the moment, but it will be fine. All right, so one thing that I can kind of do is give you a visual here of what it's saying by this statement. 35 above and below an average of 52 during the year. All right, so really what this is saying is, let's say this is the x axis is months and the y is the population. The average is 52. It says that right in there. So I'm gonna make a spot here for 52, which is the average. And by saying it oscillates 35 above and below, that means it's gonna go 35 above, 35 above 52 is 87. And it's also going to go 35 below 52, which is 17. All right, so what I've got here is I just got the, if we were to try to graph this thing after we figured it out, our Y range would be 17 to 87. So this would be the bottom of the graph and this would be the top of the graph. But what you can do is you can realize here that this is giving you A and D. A is how far we move from the middle or the average to the top, which is 35. Right, just like it was before, nothing different here. And D is the middle itself or the average, which is 30, 52. Great. Now B here, B is really implied in the problem based on the time frame. What it's saying is it oscillates throughout the year. Well, B is first off 2 pi over the period. And since it's talking about in terms of months, the period is the number of months 
in a year, which is 12. All right, so it's saying whatever happens in one year, it's going to start doing the same thing the next year. So 2 pi over 12, which equals pi over 6, is our b. And now c, this is exactly what I was talking about before, is you have to pick a specific one for these. And that's going to come from knowing this. It hits the lowest value in January. Okay, so when t equals 0, which is right here, we know it's at the bottom. All right, so what that means is the bottom of the graph, we're going to have c equals 0, and we have to use negative cosine. Right, so we pick negative cosine because it's at the bottom of the graph and we know the x value there, which is 0. Okay. So what you pick as far as cosine, negative cosine, goes with the c value. And that's the only piece of information we're given. We don't know what's happening in 3 months. We don't know what's happening in 6 months. We just know it's at the bottom at t equals 0. So we pick c along with the correct trig function. All right, so we're picking c equals 0 with negative cosine, <clears throat> and we're plugging in our a, b, and d. So we get y equals negative cosine, well, negative a, 35, cosine, b is pi over 6, we would get x minus 0. Once again, you don't have to put the 0 there because it's 0. Plus d, which is 52. And if you want to clean this up, just get rid of that minus 0. You can do that. But that is our equation. Now, in terms of what the problem is asking, you have everything figured out, but you want an equation P in terms of T. So our final answer, depopulation is P equals everything over here but T instead of X. Now what you can do is actually graph this and check your answer because one thing that I think is the easiest fix of all is if you make the wrong C, if you pick the wrong trig function, maybe you should have picked negative sine and you pick negative cosine, but you have the right C value, then you can just check and adjust it. All right, so if we plug in our formula to the calculator to check, We've got negative 35 cosine of oops, pi divided by 6, x, close off our parentheses, plus 52. Now if we graph it, we talked about our window before here. Oops. The x should go from 0 to 12 because that's how many months are in a year, and that's what we're measuring. You can do more than that if you want to do two years, but just seeing one year is plenty good. Uh, scale of one's fine. I'm not going to worry too much about that. And then the y value is what's more important so we can see it. We saw that it should go between 17 and 87. So maybe doing from 15 to 90 just to make sure it's all there. And since this is a pretty large number, I would change my x scale to like 5 or something. So it's not too much, too many hash marks. But you hit graph, and then I forgot my negative sign, didn't I? <laughs> of course I did. All right, don't forget that negative sign because that's what's going to make it start at the bottom. All right, but we can see exactly here, it told us our low population happens at t equals 0, and it's doing exactly that. It's happening at t equals 0. And if you calculate the value there, plug in 0, 
you get the 17, which is the low value. Okay. All right, so that is one way we can be presented with a problem and come up with an equation. Now, the next part is just to test and make sure you know, you're really understanding the difference of what's asking here. So the next part says, what if the lowest value of the rabbit population occurred in April instead? Now, remember from part A, the only time we used the lowest population occurring in January was to get C. So everything would be the same here. except the C value because it's a happening at a different time. All right now you do want to be careful here um, with as far as what April means. April is not T equals 4, it's T equals 3 because it's 3 months after January. So April is T equals 3, so we're going to have C equals 3, and we're still talking about the lowest value, so, and we still want to use negative cosine. All right, nothing else changed. We didn't change the range of the population or anything, so I'm going to take exactly the same equation that we had here, negative 35 cosine pi over 6, we got t, but instead of 0, we've got 3 now for c, plus 52. Okay, taking the same exact formula here, but changing c to 3. That's all you got to do. Although, do realize that it is still saying, what if the populate low population? Right, and the last one asks, what if the average value of the rabbit, not rabbi, what if the average value of the rabbit population occurred in July? July is t equals 6. I'll go ahead and point that out. And the population was decreasing. So we're at our average and it's going down, which means we want to use negative sign. with c equals 6 because that is actually occurring at 6. Right. Once again, everything else is exactly the same. We have the same amplitude, the same midline, the same period, so the same b, but we have a different c value along with our different trig function. So this time we're going to use negative sine, and in place of c, I'm going to put 6. Now, because this one is so different, might as well just graph it and see, okay, at t equals 6, are we actually decreasing? And at the average, if we go to our graph, our windows will be good. We got negative 35 still, so that's fine. We have sine pi over 6. And here we've got x minus 6. And don't forget that second parenthesis that I forgot last time, which made the graph look weird. But that is our graph. And if we actually graph that, and you if you can kind of see at 6 here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, it looks like we're at the average of 52. And it's definitely going down. Are we actually at the average? If we plug in 6, yes, it is 52 and it's going down. All right, so this problem is also very important in just kind of displaying the difference with what C means. All right, the next one is uh, involving temperature. Really, once you've done this problem here, you've kind of set up a lot of 
the uh, word problems that we're going to see. Uh, this one says outside temperature over a day can be modeled using a sine or cosine function. But it's kind of got to tell you this because yeah, I don't think it's obvious that temperature would necessarily look like that. It definitely goes up and down. Suppose you know the high temperature for the day is 54 degrees. So we're told when the high temperature is, or what the high temperature is, it's 54. And we are told the low temperature is 38 degrees and occurs at 7 a.m. Assuming T is the number of hours since midnight, I'm highlighting everything that we're going to use, find an equation for the temperature D in terms of T. Now, since it says it can be modeled using a sine or a cosine function, what this means is we're going to have our sine or cosine stuff, but I'm just going to go ahead and use the letters they're using now, which is D and T instead of Y and X. So we're going to once again do exactly the same thing we did before. We're going to figure out what A, B, C, and D are. When we figure out C, we've got to use the appropriate thing. And we'll go ahead and mention once again here, A, D, and B are the same for everyone. They never will be different for two people, only C. But even with a problem like this, with word problems, that's usually not true. But I want to draw a little graph here just to give a visualization. All right, so we're told the high temperature is 54, which I'm going to put a spot on the graph for, and the low temperature is 38. And we label this here. What we are also told about the low temperature is it's occurring at 7 a.m. Since T is the number of hours since midnight, that is at T equals 7. Right. But you can gather a lot just from what we figure what I've drawn here. We can figure out the average because it's halfway in between, which is the which will end up being the midline. And how do we figure out the average of 54 and 38? You might be able to eyeball it, but you can also just do yeah, the definition of the average of two numbers, add them up and divide by 2. 54 plus 38 is 92, divided by 2 is 46. All right. So that's telling us D, which is the average, is 46. And then the amplitude, how far we go above and below the average, is 8. To go from 46 to 54, or the other way, is 8. All right, now, B is always 2 pi over the period, and here it should make sense that the period is 24, because we're talking about the number of hours in a day. We got 2 pi over 24, which simplifies to pi over 2. Sorry, pi over 12. Uh, the last thing that we have here is figuring out C and which one we should use. And that comes from the low temperature. So low means we want to use negative cosine again. And it's occurring at T equals 7, so we got to use it with C equals 7. But if we plug in all this stuff here, we got our A is 8, our D is 46, our B is pi over 12, our C is 7 with negative cosine. Our answer, D equals negative 8 cosine pi over 12, T minus 7 plus 46. Now go ahead and just 
you can graph this. This is your answer. It's not asking us to do anything with it, so we are done. But you can graph this just to make sure, which once again, I will encourage you. If you want to make a graph here, we got our negative 8 cosine of pi divided by 12 times x minus 7 was our c plus 46. All right, negative 8 cosine pi over 12, x minus 7 plus 46. If you make your window, the y's should go from at least negative, at least 38 to 54. Our t should go from 0 to 24, or, or our x. And that might give a lot of hash marks, so I'm just going to make the scale too. But the temperature, the y value is going between... 38.54, I'll just do 35.60. All right, but once again, we want to check that we actually hit this, that the low temperature is actually occurring at t equals 7. Go to calc, value, t equals 7, and we're at the low temperature of 38, and it's following its shape. Uh, so that's really what I, I want to do from this section. I initially had one more problem, word problem here, but we'll just focus on this one as when we get to 2.4 as well. I think that's enough for this section. Okay. Right. Um, and it won't be on this section's homework. It'll be on 2.4. Right. But one thing I will say, we did pretty much the same thing over and over and over and over and over again in this section because really everything is based around, in this section is based around ultimately, can we come up with these equations and then solve them in some way?